Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is again from Medical Surgical Nursing on Consciousness. We will learn about features and management of unconsciousness. Let's get started. With the introduction of unconsciousness, unconsciousness is the loss or lack of consciousness due to alteration in mental state. It is a state in which a person is unable to respond to people and activities because of lack of awareness. To create unconsciousness, a disease must disturb ascending areas. Areas is a part of brain, reticular activating system that resides in the length of brain stem up to the thalamus and if disturbed, it can disturb the function of both cerebral hemisphere or metabolically depress overall brain function. This can occur in drug overdose or any other disease condition like epilepsy. This is the anatomy of a brain in which this part is cortex, here is cerebrum which is the largest part of the brain, here is thalamus, brain stem. And this is the location, these blue dots are the location of reticular activating system. There are types of unconsciousness which are stupor, somnolent, excitory, deep coma. Explanation of each type is given here. Like the stupor is a state, state of semi-consciousness in which person is responsive. Somnolent is a state in which person feels drowsy or sleepy and can respond to you if you speak to the person. Excitory is a type in which in excitory unconsciousness, patient does not respond to but get disturbed by sensory stimuli like a bright light. If you switch on a bright light in front of a patient in the same room in which excitory unconscious patient is there, then they will respond to this stimuli or noise, similarly noise or sudden movement, sudden movement of the bed or sudden movement nearby the patient. Next is deep coma. Deep coma is a state of complete loss of consciousness in which person is aware of himself and the environment but cannot be aroused if he is in deep coma. Etiology of unconsciousness can be, first of all, fainting. Fainting can lead to unconsciousness, even for a short period of time. Next can be imbalance of heat. If there is any disease in the body that is creating disturbance in body temperature, that can be another cause. Shock, head injury, stroke, heart attack, asphyxia or epilepsy. They all, one way or the other, they disturb electrical activities of the brain, nerve transmission of the brain that can lead to unconsciousness. How is unconsciousness caused? Now, consciousness is a complex function, mixture of many functions which is controlled by reticular activating system. This begins in medulla. It connects that RES, connects itself to the midbrain, hypothalamus and thalamus in order to function. RAS should connect itself to numerous parts of the brain. So its integrated pathway connects to thalamus and to the limbic system by hypothalamus. Reticular formation produces wakefulness, whereas they are also responsible for awareness of self and awareness of environment. If there is any disturbance in RAS, then whole hemisphere areas involves many organs, many parts of the brain in their function. So if areas are is disturbed, then all of the function all of the function of that each organ is disturbed. That's why there is unconsciousness. As a diagnostic test, we can perform laboratory test, CT scan, MRI, lumbar puncture, EEG, electroencephalogram, and test for abnormal reflex. Along with that, we can see clinical symptoms in the body of patient. Clinical symptoms like responding to only specific stimuli or not responding to any stimuli. There might be oliguria. There might be imbalance in body temperature. Sometimes fever, sometimes hypothermia. 
they might be unable to respond to communication unable to respond to anybody's voice not being able to recognize there might be loss of vision for a while those symptoms can help us to clinically diagnose otherwise other tests are abg analysis acid base level pressure of oxygen pressure of carbon dioxide blood urea nitrogen test prothrombin time ct scan of head mri of head lumbar puncture this gives us a view of cerebrospinal fluid electroencephalogram to view the electrical activity of brain test for abnormal reflex we have superficial reflex as well as a deep reflex in many parts of our body we can check biceps triceps patellar plantar any kind of reflex and if that test gives us abnormal reflex it is also a sign of unconsciousness next can be dolls eye reflex this is one of the most important diagnostic test dolls eye reflex is normally seen in neonate and infant in dolls eye reflex movement of eye occurs in opposite direction in which head is moved ocular vestibular test in this we test for nystagmus that is involuntary oscillation of the eyeball next is pupil examination constriction and dilation of pupil and movement of extraocular muscles extraocular muscles helps us to move the whole eye function the whole eye next can be glasgow coma scale we can score total score will be 15 five for each category eye opening verbal response and motor response and we can give score on the basis of that in glasgow coma scale scale management first of all for unconsciousness we need first aid management that is maintain airway of the patient Take a note for alteration in consciousness. Check for gasping of the patient. Activate emergency response. Maintain vital signs and maintain lateral position as far as possible. Lateral position is if any secretion can get out of the patient's mouth. So lateral position is important. First priority should always be airway, and then consciousness. because it is about unconsciousness we should we should check for gasping emergency response should be activated monitor maintaining vital signs maintaining a record of vital signs is important because any changes in the vital signs can be a sign of something wrong occurring in the body something something worsening in the body and then maintaining vital signs after that lateral position next is providing eye quality cpr for providing eye quality cpr compression should be started within 10 second of recognition of cardiac arrest that means if we recognize cardiac or respiratory arrest we should start cpr within 10 second pushing should be done at least for 2 inches for adult and 1 inch for children and the rate should be 100 beats per minute 100 push per minute after each pushing during cpr we should allow whole muscles to recoil there should be no interruption during pushing breath should be given effectively so that chest can rise chest muscles can rise that cycle should be 30 is to 2 ratio according to revised guidelines compression should be 2 inches at least in adult in breast bone 100 times per minute that is the speed speed rate and that finally helps to move oxygenated blood to vital organs heart brain kidney vital organs airway airway should be open and then checked for breathing blockage also rise of the chest should be noticed and air movement should also be noticed along with that for breathing chin lift and tilt should be followed tilt chin because chin chin helps to remove the unobstructed passing of air for breathing two breaths should be given and then chest compression should be resumed medical management goal of medical management should be to preserve the brain function that means to provide oxygen to the brain back again and to prevent additional complications 
primary focus should be to maintain supply of oxygen and glucose to the brain. Patient circulation, airway, and breathing must be maintained according to the protocol CAB. Circulation, airway, and breathing must be maintained. Also, emergency drugs should be used widely. As a nurse, we should see the need of the drug, choose the correct drug, and give the drug correctly with correct dose in correct time. Next, ventilator should, support should be provided if the patient needs. If the patient has hyperventilation or hypoventilation, when body is no longer able to control the ventilation, then artificial ventilator support should be provided. Also, oxygen therapy should be started. Before starting oxygen therapy, SpO2 level of the patient should be checked. There should be a continuous blood pressure monitoring and recording, as well as fluid balance monitoring and recording. Most important thing for medical management is managing the underlying cause. If the unconsciousness is due to shock, medicine, medicine should be provided according to that protocol, according to type of shock. If unconsciousness is due to seizures, seizures should be managed medically. For nursing management, first of all, patient's family should be informed what has caused the situation and how are healthcare team managing the situation. After that, Glasgow Poma scale should be performed to monitor the consciousness level of the patient. Patient should be kept on a constant observation with maintenance of airway, pain management, vital signs recording, and food maintenance. Covalescence care should be provided. Covalescence care because patient should be recovered quickly, cause should be treated promptly. Also, enough life care should be provided. If the patient is a sufferer of cardiac or respiratory illness, then, or if the disease is chronic, palliative and hospice care can be provided to the patient. This is Glasgow Coma Scale. We have three categories, eye-opening, verbal response, and motor response. For eye-opening, these, these are the categories that can be checked for verbal response and for motor response. If the score is 15 out of 15, patient is normal. If 13 to 15, patient has mild unconsciousness that can be managed. 9 to 12, moderate. 3 to 8, severe. Complications of unconsciousness can be reduction of long residual capacity, venous stasis, blood staying for a long time in veins, pressure ulcer due to uh, unable to change position for a long period of time, altered metabolism due to many organs being unable to function properly, and coma. Unconsciousness for a long period of time can lead to coma. We have completed unconsciousness and added on to syncope. Syncope is also called as blackout. It is a temporary loss of consciousness and posture described as fainting. It is seen in patients with low cardiac output, hypotension, and epilepsy or any disease causing low cardiac output, syncope can be seen in such patients. Causes of syncope can be diminished venous return to the heart that leads to decreased cardiac output, also disorders in nervous system, any kind of neuropathy, and disorders of blood starting from anemia till myocardial infection. Alert point for syncope can be Alert point is the point from which treatment should be immediately started. If syncope occurs with exercise, that is an alert point. If syncope starts with palpitation of heart, that is an also an alert point. Also, if there is family history of recurrent seizure and patient is facing syncope, treatment should be done promptly. Nursing management. First of all, patent airway should be maintained. If the patient is at risk of fall, Side dress should be elevated. Position should be maintained. Trendlenburg position. After maintaining Trendlenburg position for 15 to 20 minutes, again lateral position can be continued. Loss of consciousness or unconsciousness should be prevented because patient having a risk factor and having a symptom of syncope can easily be led, uh, lead to loss of consciousness. Also, we can loosen any tight clothing to make the patient comfortable. We can apply moist towel to the patient's face and neck because that provides a relaxation. Relaxation to the skin, also relaxation to the muscles. 
we should try to maintain temperature that means we should prevent hyperthermia and hypothermia heat loss and excess heat gain should be both should be prevented patient should not be slapped or shaken because if suddenly shaking or slapping the patient might create some muscular 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 disorder in the patient do not give the patient anything to eat or drink until fully conscious this is because while in the state of syncope while in the state of mild unconsciousness patient's gi tract is not able to function properly so at that time any kind of oral food or fluid if provided to the patient can lead to the respiratory tract and cause choking or aspiration with the patient thank you so much next topic will be discussed in next video